Hello and welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today we'll talk about type 2 error in clinical research. More after the short intro. What is type 2 error in clinical research? Clinical research involves the use of statistics to draw conclusions from data. Statistical tests are used to determine whether the observed differences between groups or treatments are likely to be due to chance or due to the effects of the intervention being studied. However, there is always a risk of making a type 2 error. When a researcher fails to reject the null hypothesis, even though the alternative hypothesis is true. In this video, we will explore what type 2 errors are, what causes them, and how they can be avoided. Type 2 errors occur when a researcher fails to reject the null hypothesis. For example, they hypothesis that there is no difference between two groups or treatments, even though the alternative hypothesis is true. This type of error can lead to incorrect conclusions, which can have serious implications for clinical research. For example, an effective treatment will not be available on the market. Statistics play an important role in clinical research, as they help researchers make sense of data and draw conclusions from it. In order to draw valid conclusions from data, researchers must first establish a null hypothesis and determine whether or not it can be rejected. In most cases, the null hypothesis is a statement that there is no difference between two groups or treatments. In order to reject the null hypothesis, the researcher must demonstrate statistical significance, which means that the observed difference between groups or treatments is unlikely to be due to chance. What are the types of errors in clinical research? There are two types of errors that can occur in clinical research, type 1 errors and type 2 errors. A type 1 error, also known as an alpha error, occurs when the researcher wrongly rejects the null hypothesis even though it is true. A type 2 error, also known as a beta error, occurs when the researcher fails to reject the null hypothesis, even though the alternative hypothesis is true. False negatives are also possible in clinical research. A false negative occurs when a test result is negative, but the condition being tested for is actually present. Type 2 error or false negatives can occur due to small sample size or wrong assumption in the true treatment effect. What are causes of type 2 error? Type 2 errors can be caused by several factors, such as small sample size, low power, and low significance levels. Sample size is an important factor in determining whether a type 2 error will occur. The larger the sample size, the less likely it is that type 2 errors will occur. The power of a statistical test is also important. The power of a statistical test is the probability that it will correctly reject the null hypothesis when it is false. Higher power reduces the chances of making a type 2 error. Finally, the significance level or alpha level is also important. This is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. Increasing the significance level reduces the chances of making a type 2 error. How to avoid type 2 errors In order to avoid type 2 errors, researchers should take steps to increase sample size, increase power. Increasing sample size increases the power of a statistical test and reduces the chances of making a type 2 error. Increasing power also reduces the chances of making a type 2 error. Finally, increasing significance levels reduces the chances of making a type 2 error. In conclusion, type 2 errors occur when a researcher fails to reject the null hypothesis, even though the alternative hypothesis is true. They can be caused by small sample sizes, low power, and low significance levels. Type 2 errors can be avoided by increasing sample size, increasing power, and increasing significance levels. By taking these steps, researchers can reduce their chances of making a type 2 error and ensure that their results are accurate and valid. Thank you for watching our video, 
and we hope that you found it informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content on clinical research. We look forward to see you next time.